it, let's talk. You want to speak about it, let's speak. We're going to spread this encouragement from the church to the street. The Lakeisha, Lakeisha, Lakeisha Mosley Show. The Lakeisha, Lakeisha, Lakeisha Mosley Show. The Lakeisha, Lakeisha, Lakeisha Mosley Show. And they talk about nothing but the unseen and unspoken issues while providing encouragement and love and understanding. She talks about issues that people in high places and influences are afraid to discuss publicly. Stay tuned. It's about to get real live, live, live. And you're tuned in to the Lakeisha Mosley Show. Yes, yes, yes. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing this evening? It's Lakeisha with the Lakeisha Mosley Show, and that was my amazing intro, which was developed by the amazing recording artist Lakeisha Nicole, better known as Eternal. I so love it, sis. Thank you so much. I get hyped every time I hear it, every time that it plays. It just takes me into what the Holy Spirit is doing tonight, which is something new, which is something inspiring, and that is so amazing. I am so excited, you guys. I have an amazing special guest with me tonight. But before I introduce her, I want to tell you what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about coming back. Have you ever had to come back in your life, beginning again? I don't know about you. I have. I had to get that together. I had to... Uh, revamp. I had to change up. But it wasn't always easy. It wasn't always something that I welcomed in. But you know what? When I look back, I'm so glad that I did because it totally allowed the Holy Spirit to reign and move within my life. My special guest, you guys, is Tammy Waters. And her special name is just Tammy. Excuse me, Tammy Flowers. Did I say Waters? I'm thinking about water right now, so that's what it is. <laughs> Tammy, did you hear me? I'm thinking about flowing water right now. That's all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Her name is Tammy Flowers, better known as just Tammy. This beautiful woman is a recording artist who has shared the platforms with gospel legends Hezekiah Walker, John P. Key, Dr. Bobby Jones, with Marvin Sapp. I mean, that's just the beginning. She shared with stellar award-winning Isabel Davis, and the list goes on and on and on, y'all. I'm just telling you, this woman is phenomenal. But listen, she has an amazing story, and we're, great, we're grateful to have her here tonight. Tammy, how you doing this evening? I'm blessed. I cannot complain. Oh, man. I, you know what? I'm so blessed to have you. I'm so blessed to commune with you this evening because... Everything about you just radiates in my life, and I'm just so grateful just to be able to talk to you about this amazing topic and everything that's going on within your life. Listen, begin mm-hmm. it again, like I was just saying, look, it, it wasn't always easy. What about you? Absolutely not. Um, anything that the saying goes, anything that's worth having, um, it, it's hard, you know, uh, or not even so much as hard, but you have to work at it. You have to work for it. You have to work towards it. And so, no, it's not easy, but it's definitely worth it. Amen. I I tell you, you know what? It is worth it. But you know what, transparent moment? That worth it part came later. (laughs) Yeah. It came later (laughs) for me. (laughs) Listen, it came later. You're absolutely right. I have to be honest. I had to go through a little bit of the process what God was, was really doing in my life. He had to do some, some pruning and some plucking. And I said, God, I don't know what's happening. I'm not comfortable, but this is not feeling really good, you know? And, but you know what? Mm-hmm. It always does work out in the end. So, you know, I just want to know, can, do you know of a time in your life, you know, just a brief time in your life where, you know, things immediately changed, you know, you thought that, Things were going to go well, you know, in your life, but you realize, you know what, I I don't have control. Let me know. That's right. That's right. Uh, One thing that I I had to learn, and it was the hard way, um, uh, it's not a good thing. Uh, The Word of God lets you know that obedience is better than sacrifice. And one thing that we do as people, um, we say that we pray to God, 
but we don't necessarily wait for him to respond. And we take it upon ourselves to move on on our own. Uh, And what ends up happening is that we end up suffering. We end up going through um, a lot of trauma and, and things that could have probably been avoided, but because we figured that, you know, we know, you know, what we're doing and how we're doing. And uh, one thing that um, I, I definitely, I speak out on, and it's not to downplay anyone, but it's definitely far as my testimony on the fact that when I first got married, my, my, not my, my marriage is now awesome. Um, but when I, um, when I met, um, got married or shall I say when I married at um, the age of 19 and um, when you first, when you go into a marriage and, and, you know, your mindset is basically, you know, it's supposed to be far as blissfulness and, you know, awesomeness and just, you know, um, just a, a ray of sunshine and you're running through the, the, the flowers and all of this and that. And, and, and the reality is, uh, or shall I say was that that was not the case. And so there was a lot of things that I end up having to uh, learn the hard way, um, not even just far as marriage, but far as as a person, um, the, the, the person that um, the type of person that I was at that time. Um, and it was just it wasn't a good place for me. It really wasn't a good place for me. And it took years and I would have to say a minimum of 10 years for me to be able to reflect back on far as the change or movement, positive movement. And so um, definitely not a good thing and not a good place when you have to, you know, learn those lessons and know you don't realize that it's all worth it in the beginning. You don't realize that, but then you, once God brings you out, when he brings you through it and you can reflect back on that thing, then you realize that God's hands were still yet upon your life and that he was only just taking you through to get you to the next place. That's amazing. That's truly amazing. And you're speaking so, you're speaking so much truth right now because that is a nugget that you do learn as you go in your journey that, you know, God is really working on something great within your life. And Mm -hmm. uh, that's honest. That's honest. You know, you really are not equipped to receive (laughs) what God is doing in the pruning of your life until it begins to manifest greatly in your life. But then, you know, that's when you began to acknowledge that, okay, things are not all the way right the way we thought it was. You know, let me know if you feel that way too, because, you know, sometimes... But you're absolutely right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what, in in growing up, um, I've always been told, even as far as from my peers, like, as if I did not quite fit in. And it was like, wait a minute, hey, I'm doing everything that you you know, you know, guys are doing. And, and it was like, mm, no, it's just something different about you. And, you know, you try to fit in and you don't quite realize that, you know, what's going on. You're just trying your best to sort of, so to speak, be a part of the norm, the average, and not realizing that, you are not built to be average. You're not built to be normal. You you are actually built to stand out, to stand up, to stand uh, for something, to represent far as something that is so much greater than you. So at that time, you know, when, when you're going through things, you feel that, you know, it's a punishment. You You feel that, you know, maybe there's something about it that you deserve you know, to go through some things. Uh, but at, like I said, like once time passed, then it's like, you know, you start to kind of like reflect and, and the Holy Spirit will, will allow you to do that. That thing where it's just like, okay, you, you get to kind of like, huh, that wasn't even about me or, you know, that wasn't me. That wasn't, you know, uh, based off of my own strength or my own goodness. 
and then you start to realize that you you are different. You you not that you're better, but you've been called to do something. Even if you don't understand every part of it, you know that there is something that is different about you that calls for positive movement, that calls for um, a better life, that, you know, it, it's, it's a change, it's a shift in the atmosphere. And you begin to feel that thing. And that's when you just, you, you basically like, okay, what do I do next? Wow. It's, it's, you, you're, you literally just spoke a mouthful and I'm telling you, Tammy, you know, someone's being healed right now, you know, from, you know, bondage from the chains and the wounds that they've carried with them because they're confused, yeah. you know, they don't know yeah. why, you know, why, why am I different? How come I can't fit in? You know, I'm just like you. I put my pants on just like you. I put my, mm -hmm. you know, my clothes on just like you. How come? And then you realize, you know, I'm not the same. I was told that before, you know, um, one lady I used to work with, she came up to me and she just smiled and it was so genuine. She said, you know what? You don't belong here. I said, huh? What do you mean I don't belong here? Like, we work together. She said, no, I'm not talking about that you're not gifted to be here. But yeah. you don't belong here. This is not your destiny. This is not your destiny. This is not your end. So, you know, have you ever had that, you know, you know, ex you know situation or some type of, um, you know, encounter where someone really came up to you or you had an encounter where you knew, you know what, change is getting ready to come? Um, you know what? Absolutely. Um, and like I was saying, like even in growing up, it was it, it's it's crazy to think back on it, or shall I say, it's more of a blessing to think back on it, because the in being even a teenager, it was like there was a, a calling already on my life, whereas I couldn't quite. will be far as the, the, the drug least of they were able to tell me and um I've even uh had an encounter with far as being in uh New York City and And I was um, praying to God because I said I, I felt that God wasn't moving fast enough on my behalf. And I remember far as being all the way at the edge of the platform at the train station and I'm waiting for the train and I'm all the way at the end of the platform and my head is turned away from everyone else and no one really stands over there. And um, the tears begin to pour down my faith. And I just kept on saying, God, you know, I don't get it. I don't get it. You know? And I felt so alone, even though I knew that he was there, but at the same time, you know, I, I, I felt as if he was just not hearing me. And when I turned back around, there was a lady that was standing right next to me. And it was like, my goodness, like, how can you get this close to me? And so her initial, um, conversation was, you know, do you have a piece of gum? And it was like, okay, who walks up to somebody and on the streets of, you know, New York and say, you know, do you have a piece of gum? And so I was like, no. And then she was like, do you know anything about computers? And she started talking about computers and I'm just sitting there and I'm just, you know, well, standing there and I'm just like, okay, as much that is going on in my life and, you know, that I'm going through, I really don't have time for this, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to try to be nice. And um, when we got on the train, I sat down, she sat directly next to me. And so I tried not to think nothing of it. And here's the thing about it. God would bless you and, and he would show people things and he would give them what to say, when to say it, just so that way you know that he's there and that he's real. And the lady didn't know anything about me, never seen her a day in my life. And 
I just came from seeing an apartment and this apartment was like horrific. And I was like, God, you know, things got, it has to be better than this. You, you can't possibly be giving me like this little apartment, you know, and I have three kids, I, you know, and, um, next thing you know, as I'm sitting there, the lady comes out and she goes and say, Ooh, wow. So I'm just sitting there and I'm like, oh, goodness. Now I'm sitting next to somebody that I lost it. <laughs> and she came out. She said, oh, my goodness. And she said, your mansion is beautiful. This lady didn't know I was living in a shelter. This lady didn't know that God had shown me in a word, uh, in his word about a mansion. And yet she sat next to me and she began to just speak out. And I looked at her. So I, I began to understand more of, of, of movement and, and, and being able to um, accept some things, accept what God allows and allow him to move however he so choose to move on my behalf. And so there was a lot of times that, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, people would actually speak into my life and, and speak some things. And I couldn't quite see those things at that time. But now I, I, I'm starting to see those things manifest itself even the more. And it's like, wow, like the wow factor right now. Absolutely. That is totally amazing because, you know, you spoke a mouthful there because a lot of times we don't realize the next direction that God has taken us until we get right. there. And, we, and we're confused, you know, sometimes like, okay, God, why are you taking me here? Who is this woman? Who are these people? Right. This doesn't have anything to do with my timeline or what I feel like we need to go and move forward. But God always, you know, takes us to a location where either we're going to get some type of nugget of wisdom, either we're going to, you know, you know, find out that, oh, wow, we need to grow in the area. You know, it always is yeah. such a transition, you know, and I, I feel like that your your song, you know, Victorious is, is similar to that. Like, you know, you have some type of, you know, it came from a place where, you know, God did something in you and brought you yeah. out of something. So tell us a little bit about that. Cause we're getting ready to play that right now. Cause I'm excited about that. Awesome. Okay. So you're absolutely right. Um, you're absolutely right. I, everything that I have experienced in my life, even started from childhood, from even dealing with far as domestic violence, watching my, my, my dad open up my mom in front of me uh, with a butcher knife and, and she's being pregnant. I'm experiencing far as the domestic violence and I'm experienced far as coming to find out that he has bipolar and schizophrenia and, and, and setting the, the apartment building on fire with us in it, 18 apartments. Um, he individually uh, set them on fire. And then to the fact of me uh, getting married at the age of 19 and, and being a, a domestic violence um, victim far as myself. And then to go through all of that, and then as of December 28th, 2006, not knowing that God was going to make me free, three in the morning, God decided to make me free, to set me free. And I didn't understand, and I didn't mama, and I didn't complain about the many things that I, at the many traumas that I have suffered, I couldn't understand it. But in the midst of it all, I just kept a praise in my spirit. I kept a thank you. I didn't understand it, but I kept a thank you. And I believed that one day that he was going to, 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 to 
make me victorious over all to rule over to, to, to place the enemy under my feet to, to, to tread over those serpents uh, uh, to to be able to move the stumbling blocks out of my way and December 20 December 28 2006 Eventually, I went into the shelter, and, and God opened up my eyes. And one thing that God allowed me to understand is all that you have suffered, all that you have endured, all that you have gone through, it wasn't even for you, Tammy. It wasn't for you. And I began to look around. And I began to see far as the mothers and the other sisters and, and the children. And I began to see the, 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 the mothers and, and the sisters and they're missing different body parts and, and, and the depression phase that they started going through. And it was just so much. It helped me to understand that I made it. Through it all, I made it. I am victorious. I won this thing. The end result is I win. So it don't matter how it looks or how it felt, I overcame. And that's why I am victorious. My Lord, my Lord. That's, that's spoken so profound. My sister Tammy you guys, listen to this amazing song, Victorious, by my sister Tammy.
feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double XI. Yes, yes, family. That was my beautiful sister, Tammy, and her single, Victorious. The song speaks for itself, you guys. Everything that my sister and you out there have endured, you know, in your life, that anything that you have went through, you're victorious because you win Mm -hmm. in the end. You know what I'm saying? So, you know... So this this is amazing. I mean, the song speaks for itself. You know, I love the passion in, you know, your your creation in the song because it was real. It was it was transparent. This was your life. You were not held back. You weren't being hesitant. You were being moving forward and saying, "Listen, I got to tell my story." It's funny because um, I think about my sister and my beautiful fan. Um, um, Zenobia, we always talk about this uh, particular uh, method that God does. It's called a kill two birds with one stone method. <laughs> it, it's a method that you realize that God inspires you to step out into the deep waters of life, you know, where you're scared, unfamiliar places, you know, like writing a yeah. book, writing a song, doing a play, things that you've never done before. And you said, okay. But then when you step out, you realize that you were equipped the whole time and your healing was masked in that too. So it's like an opportunity Amen. to come for you. Like, isn't it amazing? So tell me, you know, you know, a time where you felt that way. Cause I feel that all in victorious. I feel that everything that you're doing. I so feel that way. I mean, um, I've always known far as music. If I didn't know anything else, I knew far as music. I knew what it was to sing. And um when I when I became far as on my own and became that 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 single mom. Uh I didn't know that I was equipped. I was told for so long on um how uneducated I was, um, how useless I was. And I began to believe that thing. Um, and when I became that single mom, I didn't know what it was to, uh, to pay a bill. I didn't know what it was to really survive and, um, to be able to stand on my own two feet because, I never had to do that. And so by the age of 30, I really didn't know exactly what um, God had already embedded in me. And my God, he showed me. And so once I left and um, I went into the shelter system with as far as my children, and I realized that, you know, I had to do something to uh, basically make ends meet um, to be able to provide for as far as for me and my children, because I already had a made up mind that we were not going to be in here, uh, but so long. And so God made it whereas even in living in the shelter, God blessed me to get a uh, a position um, inside of a company, whereas now I was actually teaching basic computers and um, basically um, teaching for as other people that were in the shelter system. Now, here's the irony of it. I'm in the shelter. They don't know that I live in a shelter along with them. Maybe not the same shelter. But see, this is the mighty God that we serve. See, even in the midst of your mess, he will still make you look good. And so I sit up there and I would I would teach them. I show them how to dress, how to carry themselves, how to speak, how to go on interviews. I, I, I did for us the resumes and I worked that thing whereas I was able to provide jobs, provide knowledge, provide far as uh homes. And I yet still lived in a shelter. But I was doing this for others, and they didn't even know that 
this, I, I was in the same boat as them. But see, it wasn't about me. And so I would sit there and I, and, and I would make sure that uh, they were well off enough that they would get their package and they would be able to get out the shelter. And um, they would now have a, a steady job that was actually making more than what I was making in assisting them. And so then God made it, whereas not only did he give me that position, then he gave me a second job along with that, whereas I became a after school um, teacher. And I started teaching as far as uh, kindergartners and first grade. And the irony in that is I didn't get my high school diploma until I was 26 years old. And so here it is. I'm teaching. I, I am teaching. But see, God knew what he was doing. And so it doesn't go according to man-made scale. Because God will give you what men think men don't uh, men think that you ought not have or that you don't qualify. God will qualify you for that thing. And so the next thing you know, um God made it whereas I started to go to different churches of different denominations. Whether it be Church of God in Christ, Baptist, Methodist, I've even been in a Catholic church. Um, and one thing that God helped me to be was who he made me to be. And I learned in that moment who Just Tammy was. Just Tammy was a child of God. Just Tammy was a survivor. Just Tammy was a fighter. Just Tammy didn't want to put on a front. Just Tammy didn't want to be cute about it. Just Tammy understood the realness. Just Tammy understood who God was to her and how God delivered me and that there was nothing that no one can say or do to me that would turn me or, 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 or get me to the place to turn my back on God. You couldn't confuse this thing in me. And so I began to go around to different churches and teach choirs. And I would teach them far as songs. And there would be Sundays that I would uh, spend to actually direct those uh, choirs. And before I knew it, I had 12 choirs under my belt in the city of New York. And yet, I never got confused with what I taught each choir, each church, nothing. And I stood my ground. And even when the Catholic church said, uh, we want you to come and teach you, I said, do you know who I am? Do you know my belief? Do you know the God that I serve? Please uh, make sure that you, you, you know where I stand and the God that I serve because I'm not changing for no one. I did not know that God was, that, that, that there was such a strength embedded in me that I walk with my head up now that there was nothing that anyone no one can say to me that would now distract me or 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 or, or minimize my relationship with God. I begin to understand and know who I am that you cannot diminish what God has given me, what he has placed in me. I did not know that. But it took for me to get by myself. It took for me to lose some friends. It took for me to lose some people. For me to understand that, God, for you I live and for you, I die. Yeah, I didn't know that this was in me. And once it started to manifest itself, and I, I started to actually see it come out of me, I began to understand. I don't want to be like anyone else. I just want to be just simply Tammy. Keeping it real. I don't want to sugarcoat. I don't want to be cute about it because I want to be about the soul saving. If the righteous is making it scarcely making it into the kingdom of heaven, I don't have time. My God. So all that time, yeah, I realized, yeah, <laughs> there's something inside of me. 
and it stirs up and I don't mind allowing it to come out. I don't mind. I don't mind because as long as I'm serving my purpose, as long as God gets the glory out of everything that I say and everything that I do, it is worth it. My living is not in vain. Wow. Tammy, you, you have literally just ministered to, you know, so many people right now who were in a stuck place, you know, um, and um, you, you really just spoke. <laughs> it's funny, both of the books that I've published, you spoke both of the books, the meaning of both <laughs> of the books, you know, yeah, how to God. get unstuck and to free yourself. Cause, because I went, we talked about this, I went through a similar, you know, uh, in my um, journey, you know, where, you know, you look at, you look at it on the surface and you say, this is dark, you know, ugly and deep, Lord. I don't know what you're going to do with this. This looks real nasty to me. I don't know how you're going to clean this up. But God's like, oh, no, you don't know how because you're not supposed to know how because I'm going to do it, right? And I, right. I, I, I feel that is your testimony. That is your story. And everything that you're speaking right now just spoke volume to myself. I mean, and to the audience, you know, we're all in here healing daily and God is reaching out to us daily in order for us to release our way of doing things in order for him to, you know, operate and we can embrace his way of doing things. I'm just so that's grateful right. for you. Now, I do want to know, because you have a few things that's coming up in your, you know, platform. You have an engagement coming up in uh uh, you have an engagement coming up um, in a couple of locations, you know, that you're going to. And I want you to talk about those things that's happening. Um, let's see. I believe it's February 2nd that's happening Correct. in your life. Yes. February 2nd, I'll be uh, in Sunbury, North Carolina, at St. James, I mean, St. John's AME uh, Church, Baptist Church. And um, I'll be ministering for as my single uh, there as um, as well as uh, some uh, more things, more more things to come. Um, and uh, also um, in April, I'll be down in Camden, South Carolina. Yes. And um, in between. So uh, more so um, I, I, I'll be in uh, far as New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Um, and, um, I believe North Carolina as well. Absolutely. So wherever God sends me, I, I, wherever he sent me, I, I'm going, I'm going in the name of Jesus. Absolutely. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> it's like, once you let God loose in your life, he keeps going and he doesn't stop. Yeah. You're like, okay, I didn't realize I had all of this going on. God, God's like, oh no, you let me take the reins. We're moving <laughs> forward. I need you to sit in this passenger seat, right? And I need you to let me drive this car. And, <laughs> and that's just Absolutely. how God works, right? And you realize Absolutely. you have more in store. Mm -hmm. I just feel that. I feel that. I'm so grateful for you. Please let everyone else know how they can um, stay in contact with you on social media and everywhere else. Absolutely. Uh, you can go to my Facebook fan page, which is Just Tammy Official, um, and that's J-U-S, Tammy, T-A-M-M-Y, Official. Um, Instagram, you can meet me at uh, It's Just Tammy Music. Uh, my website is uh, www.justtammy.com. Uh, and uh, you can also find, as far as my uh, new single, Victorious, uh, you can go and find that on Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, uh, CD Baby. Uh, you can um, basically uh, also, as far as my, uh, let's see, I'm on uh, YouTube as well. Uh, again, that's J-U-S, and then my name, T-A-M-M-Y, official. Yes. Amazing. Amen. Amen. Tammy, I am just so blessed and honored to have you um, on the Lakeisha Mosley show. I definitely, if you have time, I will welcome you back and please let us know any other things that you have going on, any upcoming events. We want to definitely broadcast Absolutely. it to the audience and I appreciate you. Thank you, you very I'm, much. 
thank you. I thank, thank you guys. You. Uh, absolutely. I thank you for having me on uh, on your show this evening. Absolutely. So blessed. So blessed. So right now we are going to transition to our last segment of the show. And everyone knows what this is. It's called Lakeisha's Love Letter of Healing, Encouragement, and Empowerment. You guys, I want us to focus a little bit on the scripture in Genesis, and this is the 22nd chapter, and it's pretty much the whole chapter, but we're going to focus really on verses 9 through 13, and through this time, we are really focused on Abraham, and we're focused on the time where, you know, Abraham finally received his son. Okay, he received his son that God told him that he will have. And God came to him and told him, you know, um, I really want you to go ahead and sacrifice your son and give him back to me. This is Isaac. And mind you, I know Abraham in his head. He was saying, wait a minute, you just gave this son to me. What is happening here? But you know what? Nevertheless, Abraham said, "Okay, this is what we're going to do. Not knowing what was going to happen, he's like, this is my son I've been waiting on for so long. I'm going to go up, and I am going to to the altar, and I am going to give my son back to the Lord. And Mm -hmm. I can just imagine being a parent. Most of us are out here that, you know, this is our child. What do we do? But nevertheless, Abraham trusted God because he knew God was always here with him. So he went up to, you know, where he needed to go and having to feel all those emotions, I can just imagine. But he went ahead and moved forward, not knowing what was going to happen at the end. And when he went to sacrifice his son and give him back to our creator, the Lord, and next thing you know, a ram in the bush came out and Abraham was able to see that ram in view, and he realized, wow, this is the sacrifice that I need to give to the Lord. He just assumed that it was going to be a son. He just assumed it was going to be a son, and he was going to, he was willing to sacrifice his son, but God put a ram in the bush. And what I want everyone to really just look at in this situation that God always supplies when he calls us. He always supplies everything that we need when he calls us. He moves us into another realm, into another dimension. And a lot of times we don't realize, you know, that God is going to supply our needs because it's really deep, dark, and ugly for us. What we see, we just see the natural. Our viewpoint is natural. And a lot of times we don't see what God sees. So isn't that amazing? We don't need to see what God sees because God just wants our obedience. He just wants our yes. And when we give God our yes, we are supplied everything that we need. So I want you to think about what is in your path that you're not seeing. If you don't see the ram in the bush, I promise you it's there. If you really just look, everything that's in your view is always a ram in the bush. It's always something there that God wants you to see, to realize, I'll never leave you. I'd never forsake you. I'm always providing for you. And I'm not only providing for your family right now, but I'm providing for your family for generations to generations to come. Your life may be deep, dark, and ugly at the present time, but I promise you, later on, you're going to see the ram in the bush. You're going to see the blessings that's coming from your obedience and your sacrifice, which is just our yes and amen. I totally love you guys. I thank you so much for coming in and spending time with me on the Lakeisha Mosley Show. And as always, as I end the show, remember, in all you do, lead with confidence, understanding, and love always. Have a blessed evening. We're going to speak the bottle, let's speak. We're going to spread this encouragement from the church to the street. The Lakeisha, 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 Mosley Show. The Lakeisha, 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 Mosley Show. The Lakeisha, 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 Mosley Show.
and they talk about nothing but the unseen and unspoken issues while providing encouragement and love and understanding. She talks about issues that people in high places and influences are afraid to discuss publicly. Stay tuned. It's about to get real live, live, live. And you're tuned in to the Lakeisha Mosley Show. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. 